Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, in a recent video I showed a loadout on an Alice pack. And one of the things I talked about was my rain jacket and pants. And I had a couple of you ask me about that. Could I talk about that? What was I meaning by that? So let me go a little more in depth in it. These are old. Okay, I bought them in the late 80s or very early 1990s. And they were by a company called Sierra Designs. And what this is, this is a large pair of pants, and this is a large Adirondack rain jacket. Just like this. Now, it's a silk nylon-like material. It's got a coating on the inside of it. A pair of drawstring pants. It has a pocket into it. And the very end of the pants has a elastic cuff. It's actually got a uh, cinch inside of it. You actually come in from the inside and there's a cinch course. You can cinch it up to boots, stuff like that, so it fits. Now, when I got these in the early 90s, the thing that was going around in most of your uh, backpacking books and ultralight camping and hiking stuff was talking about how to get more with less how to get things to multitask. How can I get my cook pot to act as this? How can I get my sleeping bag to act as this? How can I get my rain gear to be more than just rain gear? So, back in the 1990s, there was a big push on for these type of rain gear to be utilized in backpacking. And I was doing a lot of backpacking back in the day. And so, I wanted to multitask. And one of the multitasks was how could I get my clothing to perform for me different functions. And one of the things that had been brought up in uh, magazine articles and things like that, it was kind of hot at the day, was could you get a um, rain gear to perform as extra clothing? Well, yes. Um, now it's going to be hot down here in my south. But understand what I'm carrying this and why. Whenever I'm going... Um, backpacking and weight's a big issue. I'm going to be minimizing as much as I can. So I'm going to have my primary clothing. And I'm going to have a backup set. This set is probably going to be my sleep set. It'll be a t-shirt, pair of shorts, something like that. And of course more socks. But what if that's not sufficient? Or what if I need to go do something else and I need to have more on than just that pair? Well, that's where these come in. This is a full jacket and a full pair of pants. Now, yes, they'd be hot in the environment, but the rain jacket has got a big hood on it. It's Adirondack type, so it's got a zipper, and then it's got a front zippered pouch onto it for me to wear like this. So I've got something to put in quick and handy for my hands and I can zip it up. It's really good rain gear. But where this also shines is extra clothing. Now this stuff is still nylon like it's slick. So how about is a thermal barrier? I've come out and it's got colder than I expected. Well rather than wearing a bringing an extra wooby or an extra set of whatever, I would put these on over my existing clothing. So I would take my hiking clothes off that I wore during the day, probably got wet or damp, and I would change into my bone dry sleep set, which would be a t-shirt, thin pair of pants, thin uh, pajama pants, something like that, and fresh socks to get into my sleeping bag for the night. If it was not going to be quite adequate, I could take this and put it on over all of that. One, it acts like a thermal barrier, so that helps trap heat against me. And two, it was also very slick, so it slides around real easy inside the sleeping bag. And that's a problem with other types of clothing because they may not move well inside the bag. Now, as I've said in other videos, I have also got like wool pants and stuff like that for winter camping. And let me tell you from experience, they may be wonderful to wear during the day, but if you try to sleep in them, 
they cling to everything like they're Velcro. And so you get in the sleeping bag and you get positioned. And during the night, you go to move your legs or whatever. And the whole sleeping bag is like it's glued to your pants. They just won't, you know, you, eh, uh, uh, you're fighting your legs. And, eh, uh, uh, like that, trying to maneuver around within the bag because it just is clinging to you. It's not letting you move around. Something like this that's real slicky will slide around real well inside the sleeping bag. Yes, you got to worry about condensation, but this isn't cutting my face. This is strictly for it's turned colder than I expected. Let's say, well, right here in my south right now, the days are in the low 80s. Tonight will be about 43. And so after sundown, that temperature is going to drop like a rock. But now tomorrow morning, it'll climb right back up into the 60s and be 70 or 80 by 9 or 10 o'clock. So you've got to dress for your extremes, see. And by carrying this, I don't have to carry a heavier coat. I can just put this on as an outer layer. Um, I, like I said, this has held up well. Look at all these 30 years I've had this. And it was Sierra Designs is who did this. I do not know if they're still around or not, to be honest with you. But the small compact that goes into these small pouches weighs, I'm going to be generous and say like a pound, maybe a pound and a quarter. They're very, very light. When you first pick it up, you don't think there's anything in the bag. It, it feels like it's just, you know, full of saran wrap or something. But that's the entire thing. It's very, very light. And so getting a set like this by some manufacturer, and I can't tell you modern, because like I said, I've had this 30 years. I haven't had to go look. But it can be a very worthwhile additional layer to carry. Yes, it's still rain gear. I usually use a poncho because it covers my pack and everything. But there are going to be times that a poncho is just not the right thing. It's too big, it's too billowy, and it's going to hang on everything. That's where this comes in. I can put this on and I have mobility again. It's just going to be a driving rain. It's going to be miserable no matter what. Well, with a poncho, my legs are going to get wet. You know that. With this, they don't. They go all the way down to my boots. And so I can walk around in blowing rain and stuff like that and have a greater chance of staying dry. At the same time, these are quickly and easily dried. I can shake the excess water off of it, take my um, chamois type towel and run up and down and get all the moisture off of it, hang it up near the fire for a little bit of warm air, or just put it out in the sun, it's dried in just a couple moments. And therefore, I can then transfer it over for that night to sleep in it and it not be wet. It doesn't absorb anything. So therefore, it doesn't get wet. So for me, it was the best choice. And it has served me well over all these years. And quite often, when I'm, like, I'm going to my gathering this weekend, these will be going along because the projected high is going to be about 82. And projected low right now, they're saying it's going to be upper 50s, low 60s. Well, I'm great. But then again, after Wednesday, they're saying that weather may come in and the temperature may drop down in the 40s at night. So, having the ability to add another layer of warmth and make me even more comfortable is the way to go. <coughs> Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Please leave any questions or comments down below. And thank you very much for supporting my channel. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.